everyone, I'm Ian Dilley. And I am Michael Sheehan. We are here today with cyclocross pundit Johnny Sun. Welcome to the program. How's it going, guys? Fantastic. We are here to talk about the cyclocross world championships, of course, happening this weekend. This is a race where all the pressure is on Matthew Vanderpool, the odds-on favorite for this race. But this is a race that people probably expect Matthew Vanderpool to lose rather than win. He has come in as the favorite to the last three world championships as the odds-on favorite and failed to produce a world title. Johnny Sun, is this a race that Matthew Vanderpool will win? I, I believe so. I think that he absolutely come in as the odds-on favorite. He's He's dominated this year. I think that he's riding at a level much higher than last year. Um, but you have to look at the history, the last three years. Um, I don't think it's fair to say those were all his fault. A lot of stuff happened. We could look at his family history for a really deep cut. Um, the Vanderpool curse. Uh, and the Polidor <laughs> curse, if you will. Yeah. His grandfather on his mother's side was uh, second at the Tour de France multiple times. Um, finished on the Tour de France podium eight times. Never wore the yellow jersey. It's so sad. And his, and his dad, Adri, um, had a string of near misses before he finally won a world championship in 1996. Yeah, I mean, this is, uh, I think if he fails to produce a title this year, then people will, and maybe even himself, will start to believe that the Vanderpool course <laughs> is real. Yeah, uh, let's not forget, though, that Matthew Vanderpool, he did rock up his very first year racing elites. Could have still been in the U23s, but first try, no warm-up won an elite world championship, so he does have the stripes on his arm. However, the big, big story is, can he do it again? He is the hands-down favorite, but what we've been saying all year is that the only person who can beat Matthew Vanderpool is Matthew Vanderpool himself. You know, we've seen him at Degum. Uh, let's not forget, he did win Deg Degum, but he made pretty much every effort to sabotage his race from missing his start, ran into a co course marshal, he crashed off camera. You know, uh, this guy, he just rides on the ragged edge and sometimes it backfires. Not very often, but it seems to backfire on the worst possible day. Yeah, let's not forget that Matthew has only really lost twice this season. He had an off day at Copenberg Cross, rolled his ankle at Brico Cross Lokiren, but came back to win Super Prestige Gaten the very next day. Um, you know, will he have an off day at the World Championships? If he does, the rider that is going to win is Tunerts. And maybe even if Matthew Vanderpool doesn't have an off day, I mean, if he shows up with just a smidge off his form, Tunerts is showing that he is ready to take the title. He is the Belgian national champion. He is the World Cup winner. Just a dominating display of form at Hoogerheide this past weekend to win the World Cup over Wout Van Aert. Uh, Wout Van Aert held a three-point lead coming into that race. So Toon is ready for this title, and should Vanderpool slip just a midge, I think he is going to win the World Championship. Yeah, and we can't just completely write off Wout Van Aert, of course. He is the defending world champion of three consecutive years. He does seem to have... I don't want to say checked out, but it is clear that he is making big preparations for a road career with uh, Lotto Jumbo Visma. He seems to be on that trajectory while his Belgian compatriot Toon Ertz is 100% still a cyclocross racer. He has done this season so well from uh, starting the season in the States with the World Cups, with match which Matthew Vanderpool skipped. He's just built on the form all year, and he is riding better than we have ever seen Toon Ertz ride before. Johnny, is Wout Van Aert going to be on the podium? I believe so. Um, I think, you know, to continue what Michael said, is these guys are riding with no pressure on them. Uh, Wout has had an off, an off year compared to what he's done before. He's not even the guy running as the, the runner-up right now. He's, it's, that's Toon. He's, he's sort of, he's riding at a really high level, but he's flying a little under the radar. And for Toon, who's just had a banner year, he won the World Cup. He won the Belgian Championship. He has no pressure. He has accomplished and exceeded all of his goals for the year. But boy, a World Championship would be a really nice cherry on top of that. Yeah, and I think that what we're getting at is it really does come down to all the pressure being on Matthew Vanderpool. Wout Van Aert, he has the last three World Championships in a row. 
Toon Ert. He has done everything and more than he could have hoped for this season, but it is Matthew Vanderpool who has won bit every single race that he entered except for Copenberg Cross and the race where he sprained his ankle and DNF'd. He's got to just be trembling in his boots for this world championship because it is what everybody expects, but we're in this really weird situation where after the last three years, you're almost rooting for Vanderpool as an underdog. Yeah, it's nuts. And it's going to be an exciting to race to watch on Sunday. Tune in live on Flow Bikes for viewers in Canada. We'll also have the replay on demand. Looking forward to it. We'll see you there. See you.